Register in August for Synchronicity University and choose your own tuition rate. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of August 11, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And it really is very, very active as we start this week. We've got major Mercury happenings, major Uranus and Jupiter happenings with these two planets switching gears in big waves plus a full moon. Now, just the full moon in and of itself would be a big deal, but there are all these layers upon layers of what is taking place. It looks like a significantly consequential week for a lot of us out there. So let's start with what's happening right out of the gate. It is Sunday and Monday that the big activity is happening. Of course, you want to give this a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. But I will start with Mercury. Mercury will cross over, will move into the sign of Leo. Now, this is important for a few reasons. One is the fact that this represents an important turning point as part of the larger Mercury retrograde season that we are in. And it actually will be late in the week that Mercury will end shadow, bringing an end to the Mercury retrograde season. It has been since the middle of June that Mercury has been moving in and out of the sign of Leo into Cancer as well. And so now with this move back into Leo, it is going to be Mercury that will cross over the eclipse point of January 21st, 2019. It was way back then that we had an eclipse at zero degrees of Leo. It was a lunar eclipse at that, which represented powerful closures that also held a beginning. And this really was kind of a full circle moment because over the course of 2017 and 2018, we had a series of eclipses taking place in the sign of Leo and in the sign of Aquarius as well that represented big change for us, certainly as a collective, but individually as well. It represented where in at least one area of life, we were asked to own our light, to claim our confidence and to align with a sense of what it is that allows us to feel like we can shine especially bright. Whatever it is that gets in the way of that in at least one area of life, well, chances are that there were some truly karmic shifts that took place that allowed us to align with not only a higher, more loving vision for our life, but a more heart-centered vision for our life as well. Well, the last of those series of eclipses took place at the very beginning of this year. And it has been over the course of this Mercury retrograde season, as Mercury has been moving over the eclipse point, moving over the place in the sky where that eclipse took place, that we have been asked to take those lessons of January of 2017 and 2018 and bring intellect to it bring understanding, bring mind, bring conversation, and bring an elevated interpretation to what it was that perhaps up until now had been an experience, had been a feeling. And so the first activation as part of this Mercury retrograde season took place in the late part of June. The second activation took place right in the middle of July, and now here we are as we start the week, the third and final activation of Mercury to that eclipse point is going to take place. What takes place for us now as we start this week will in some way hearken to what has been happening at these key dates that I gave you and in particular will actually go way back, will hearken to what it was that took place for us back in January of 2019 of this year. And this is where we start to make sense of what was. And this is where we start to elevate the energy and integrate the energy more fully as a result. And so all of us are having these awarenesses, these epiphanies, all our own, uh, feeling a sense of karmic learning, of integration really, of deep spiritual lessons that now are becoming a full and natural part of us thanks to these key activations. However, it isn't just about Mercury that is speaking to this awareness taking place, but what else is happening in the sky? So it is right around Monday that two 
big power players change gears, change directions. First, it is Jupiter. Jupiter has been retrograde since April. And whenever a planet is retrograde, its energies are thought to turn inward. It becomes more reflective, but also a lot more personal as well. We are asked to look within ourselves and to integrate that energy more fully as part of our own individual journey. But when a planet goes direct, when it changes gears, it tends to be at its strongest state. It is closer to the earth than it would be otherwise. And it is in a place where it is able to allow us to now take all that we've learned about ourselves during the retrograde season and now with its forward movement start to apply it so that our lives start to look different with Jupiter moving through its home sign in Sagittarius it's already in such a strong placement in the sky it's able to operate at its very best its most optimistic best its expansive best at that but it's able to take that energy in an at least one area of life for all of us start to help us to have a more expansive and optimistic and hopeful belief of what could be possible for us. It is going to be Jupiter moving forward that will help us to get excited about the possibilities again in at least one area of life for each of us. However, all of us are going to be feeling this energy in some way, this energy of progress, this energy of potential. There is one thing to keep in mind with this energy though, and that is with Jupiter, as much as Jupiter is considered, uh, you know, the traditional uh, astrologers call him the great benefit. This is what the ancients called him, which means he is the great blesser. He brings blessings. And that certainly is the case. Uh, sometimes what Jupiter can bring is just more, <laughs> bring more growth, bring more expansion of an energy that is already there. And so this is where we are asked to cultivate wisdom. This is where we are asked to consider where is it that a measured response is better? Because especially in the sign of Sagittarius, uh, Sagittarius is that sign of of law, of politics, of belief, right? Not necessarily the kind of belief that is uh, connected to a spiritual experience. It's not necessarily about being plugged into source. That's more about Jupiter and Neptune for that matter in the sign of Pisces. But in the sign of Sagittarius, it's about the values that are connected to belief that can guide your life. And the thing to be careful of here is when it is that we think of a truth that is a subjective truth as an objective truth. And there are a lot of things that can be true for us, right? Again, it can be principles and values that guide our life, beliefs that we have about the world and the universe and um, the nature of divinity even, beliefs that we can have about ourselves and the meaning of life. Uh, for me personally, right, a great belief of mine is that the universe is wise and loving. And that colors so much of how I interact with the world, how I interact with others. And it's also an ideal that I seek to align myself with more and more over the course of a lifetime. And I think that that is a beautiful intention to be had, but we're all human beings, right? We're all just walking our journey to the best of our ability. And we're never going to be perfect in that. As soon as we're perfect in that, as soon as it is that we've reached that state of nirvana that the uh, Buddhists speak of, we don't really need to be here anymore. We don't really need to be in the earth school, as Gary Zukov called it. We can go ahead and ascend to the next level, whatever the next series of lessons are, because we have become enlightened. And so at least while we're here on earth, right, we can appreciate that there is wisdom, eternal wisdom that has been available to us as human beings, as we continue to grow and evolve as humanity, certainly, but even in our own individual journeys. And the best that we can do is try to remember this wisdom and align with it as consciously as possible, as often as possible. But we're never going to be perfect in that. And with Jupiter making things bigger, making belief bigger, it can turn what we think of as belief and what actually is belief and convince us that this is the truth. And that is where we need to be a little bit careful with this. If a belief empowers you, and the way that I think a belief empowers you is, does it encourage you to be more wise and more loving a presence in the world? If it does that, then you're on the right track. 
But if it is that a belief is taking you along a different line or a different direction, that's where you want to be a little bit careful. When we look at what conscious choices we have in this life, it is often incredible to me to contemplate with humility, the kind of humility that ultimately can bring grace, that we all have a lot that can humble us in tremendous gratitude if we allow ourselves to perceive it. And so it is this energy that I would advise and I would say, be a little careful with it. As soon as you think you are the master of the universe, uh, that may be when the universe says, hey, slow down a little bit. You know, maybe there's a higher, more loving wisdom that you can't appreciate just yet. And I'm going to bring you into alignment with that. I think that was part of last month, certainly with the eclipses. Eclipses will do that in a very powerful way. But when a planet is changing directions, a planet like Jupiter in particular, in the sign of Sagittarius, that sense of I can do anything and anything is possible for me, which is a great feeling, right? But that can become very addictive. I'm the one who's right. I'm the one who knows the truth. That can lend itself to a high, but for every high, there is a low. And if it is that you are willing to pay the price, which is the low, then go as high as you desire, right? Go up there, swim with the angels. However, as part of balancing in all things, as part of coming back to the path of moderation, as part of coming back to the middle way, as the Buddha spoke of, for every high, there will be a low. And just when you think you have all the answers and you know the truth and you can do anything and you are Superman and you could fly, you will be reminded that you are a mortal. And so what is that reminder? We've got that this week as well, and that is, thanks to Uranus. On the same day that Jupiter goes direct, Uranus will go retrograde. Now this is powerful for a few reasons. One is the fact that these two are happening at the same day does suggest a major shift for a lot of us out there. On the one hand, we are invited to move forward with optimism. On the other hand, with Uranus being the planet of epiphany, of realization, of revolution, uh, the planet of meaningful change, of leaping into our future, turning retrograde, turning its energy in on itself, making the energy more personal. We are being asked to look at ourselves with the honesty of Uranus, with that clear as day in an instant insight, and to be honest with ourselves of where it is that we need to be willing to be the change that we wish to see. Where is it that within ourselves, we are not allowing ourselves to be free? Taking on beliefs about our betterness, our inherent uh, greater worthiness than others, that is when I think we put ourselves into a box. And that box can be really constraining. It can be really limiting. And so this is about turning that energy inward and realizing where it is that we have allowed ourselves to sit in boxes that maybe we have outgrown. Maybe we're coming to a realization that we are bigger and more brilliant than we've given ourselves credit for before. And maybe that our need to be right is actually rooted in a box of its own and that we can be free of that as well. This is an invitation to go towards the inner revolution. And it is the inner revolution that can be especially powerful because it then allows us to tap into a true source of power that we actually do have a measure of control over. A source of power that says that my power comes from seeing myself and others. Uranus is often thought of a planet that is connected to uh, equality and human rights. In fact, a lot of the human rights movements, like the next movements, associate themselves with the planet Uranus. Whether they do it consciously or unconsciously, they end up aligning with the symbolism. And I think that is because at the discovery of Uranus, um, this heralded what historically is called the Cartesian split. And so a lot of people know the quote by Descartes, which is, I think, therefore I am. Well, this is a really powerful statement. It is essentially a statement that who I am is separate from matter. Who I am 
is connected to energy, to spirit, to mind. And it is not about matter and body and form. And so it is this statement, I think therefore I am, that right away sets the stage for greater equality. Because if it is that you are not your appearance, if it is that you are not your physical form, then it would follow and it did follow through history. It did follow from the, the 200 and some 40 years going forward from the discovery of Uranus, that if it is that who you are at your essence is not your physical form, then it means that you also at your essence are not uh, your gender, are not your race, are not your physical uh, ability or a lack of ability or differently abledness. And this idea that you could be who you are and have that identity outside of the shell, outside of the physical form that you take, that was part of the greatest revolution to take place. The greatest revolution being heralded at the time of the discovery of Uranus. It really came down to this very kernel, this very foundational understanding of what it meant to be a human being. From there, a momentum was created. And from there, that momentum allowed us to live in a world now that is more equal for more people than ever before in human history. And I'm not saying that every place in the world is perfect. And I'm not saying that there aren't people who have struggles, absolutely not. But what I am saying is that we are truly fortunate in that we get to live in a time where more people are more prosperous, are more equal uh, than ever, ever before in human history, get to live in peace than ever before in human history. And the more it is that we can align with that energy align with that sense of where it is we can turn Uranus inward, reflect on our own sense of equality and freedom with others, the more it is that we can celebrate that sense of greater equality, greater prosperity, greater peace for more people, for ourselves and more people around the world. That is truly the universal nature of Uranus. Now, of course, Uranus is going retrograde in the sign of Taurus. So if we look at it from that Taurian perspective, we move out of simply the archetype of the planet. And we look at the cycle that the planet is in right now. Of course, Taurus uh, is an energy that has to do with currencies. It has to do with money. It has to do with how it is that we pay for things. It also has to do with things itself, possessions, and the value that we give to possessions. Well, Uranus as a planet uh, doesn't really have so much to do with possessions, right? It's about ideas. It's about technologies. It's about the ways in which we connect on a mass level. It's mass media. Uh, it's the internet as well. More and more astrologers believe that as the internet becomes more and more ubiquitous, becomes more and more uh, a part of everyday reality, a part of our uh, everyday mode of communicating with others, the more it is that it becomes the providence of Mercury. It starts moving away from Uranus and towards Mercury. It is Uranus that represents the new and the next, the next mode of communicating, the next modes of technologies, uh, the latest ways in which we are tapping into electricity to be that much more connected to, equal to each other from far and wide. Uranus going retrograde in the sign of Taurus should be powerful in our understanding of the value that we give to things. An invitation to look deeper within as to why it is that we place certain value on certain things, whether we own them or whether we see them out there in the world and what it is that is worth the money to us in our own individual journeys. What is worth the cost? What is worth doing in order to earn money? And where is it that we are now seeking to align our prosperity or at least align our sense of abundance and the possibility that that could bring with something authentic, an authentic expression within us 
but also a higher sense of principles, an elevated sense of an understanding. Where is it that we can place a value on ideas and thoughts and mind and brilliance? And where is it also that we can actually consider ways of exchanging differently than we have before? So it is at the start of the week with both Jupiter and Uranus changing directions that I actually think both of these energies could end up helping each other tremendously. They can end up helping each other to keep each other in check, to remember that the greatest adventure is the one within. The greatest freedom is found by understanding the ways in which we limit ourselves and to move beyond them. And the greatest peace can come when we allow ourselves to be ourselves, but then we also give that to others as well. Now, as we navigate towards the middle of the week, the sun will meet Venus in the sky in the sign of Leo as part of setting the stage for the full moon happening immediately after that. And that full moon is happening in the sign of Aquarius. Now, part of what makes this full moon notable is that it is gonna be standing across the sky from the sun and Venus, tightly conjunct at this time. But Mars as well is not too far away. And this larger dynamic, on the one side we have Venus, uh, all this energy that is fabulous and very self-oriented, right? It's very uh, focused on the individual expression. And then we have Aquarius, which is a sign that represents the collective, uh, that speaks to actually being part of something bigger than yourself, but still maintaining an individual identity. It is the uh, Leo vibration that feels like I have something to share, I have something to give, but it is the Aquarian vibration that says I am worthy to receive. I can receive love and share it with others as well. In our own individual journeys, we may be asked to consider our connection to others and how it is that that sense of commonality can bring us great comfort. But of course, more than that, as the collective, right? This is gonna be part of our collective conversation as well. Where is equality? What are the limits of that? Uh, where is it that we are going to hold the worthiness to accept? And what does it mean to actually share? What does it mean to actually give? There are healthy and unhealthy ways of expressing any sign and any energy. But what we're seeing here is a need to compromise. There's a sense now of looking at uh, what is bright and flashy and fabulous, and also what is humble and equal. We all stand out so that none of us stand out. That is what these two energies are contrasting here and wanting to find a middle ground wanting to find a place of compromise. Collectively, certainly, we may very well see these values playing out in the ways in which and the things of which we are speaking about, the individual and the collective, the heart and the mind, the spirit, which is very much about that Aquarian energy, and the creativity, which is very much about that Leo energy as well. Now, Leo is also the sign of the king. It is a sign of rulership. Aquarius says the power is with the people, and this is where compromise may need to be had as well. We may see some interesting conversations happening among large groups of people and their leaders at this time that seem to be particularly notable. Now, because the sun is conjunct Venus, there seems to be a lot of love. So we may bring a lot of love to those people that we hold up as our leaders or even as our celebrities, because Leo is also the sign of celebrity, but we may also be asking them to understand the masses more. We may be wanting them to be part of the collective while it is that they are standing out. Now, in at least one area of life with this also, in our individual journeys, chances are we are gonna to need to find compromise with someone somewhere. We're gonna to have to consider other ways of looking at something, consider other perspectives and integrating them into a realization of our own. A full moon always brings 
a sense of awareness. It always makes us aware of what is true on an emotional level. It's the emotional truth that might have been there all along, but you hadn't wanted to see it before. You hadn't acknowledged it until you were ready. And it is now with this full moon and with our interactions with other people that we are able to actually integrate and understand and allow ourselves to find that middle ground, whether it is within ourselves or with another person or with institutions or otherwise. Now, I would also add with this, um, the sign of Aquarius, it can also be kind of self-righteous as well. The sign of Aquarius needs to be careful. We often think of these very elevated, like, you know, the dawning of the age of Aquarius kind of song associated with this energy. And that is one expression of the Aquarian energy. However, um, there is a, another side to this as well. It is a sign with a very strong duality. And as much as we think that Aquarius is about this uh, hippie, humanitarian, uh, collective love, again, and it can be that, at the same time, this is a sign of hyper-individualism. Uh, it is a sign that, on the one hand, can be very much about being part of the collective, but also... Uh, truly separating oneself from the collective as well. And so with this full moon, we may very well see some of that contrast, but also be asked to bring heart into it, which is part of the higher end and the higher expression of the Leo vibration. It is that sun and Venus standing across the sky from this full moon that I think is going to be incredibly helpful. It's ultimately going to ask us to bring heart to our understanding of each other. Finally, it is at the end of the week that there are a couple of notable things taking place. One is as soon as Mercury leaves shadow, we'll immediately reach out and speak with Uranus in a connection of some tension. So it's kind of like the spiritual understanding that we have in the early part of the week. Well, it gives way to a sense of being on a fresh path and then right away having to integrate an element of surprise and not being sure what to do with it. We really here are being asked to leap into the future to very quickly in an instant leave the Mercury retrograde season behind. Now, whatever it is that looks challenging on the surface, and it may very well be just a brief moment, well, that will be the area that turns into supreme blessings once we get into next week and Mercury speaks in supreme harmony with Jupiter. And I wanna also give you a little bit of a heads up. It is this week that both Mars and Venus reach anorectic degrees. And what that means is they start to move towards the very end of their sign. The energy becomes that much more concentrated. And with Mars, that is something we truly do want to watch. It is going to be next week that planets are going to start to change very quickly. The energy starts to shift. We start leaving the sign of Leo behind, moving into Virgo season. It's time to go back to work, right? Back to work, back to school uh, energy here. And as we enter this week, or at least as we are wrapping up this week, and these planets move towards the end degrees of the sign of Leo, uh, their energy becomes stronger and the uh, display of Leo energy can become that much more notable. And so we do want to watch this within ourselves as well. Uh, Leo can be an energy of pride. It can be an energy that displays strength, but that doesn't mean there isn't still vulnerability within. And especially with Mars, um, the real lesson here is to remember not to take things personally. I think that that is one of the great spiritual truths. I mean, this is something uh, that was written about in the Four Agreements uh, by Miguel Ruiz, where he talked about uh, one of the Four Agreements being not to take things personally. It is one of these spiritual truths that we understand that there is great peace to be had when we don't take on someone else's uh, kind of boisterous show or demand for attention when it is that we maintain a healthy sense of self and a healthy sense of our own ego then we're able to allow people to be whomever it is that they need to be in whatever space it is that they are and they need to be in while maintaining a sense of ourself and our worthiness and our peace that is going to be part of the invitation this week 
as both Venus and Mars move into very concentrated positions. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there is so much here, right? But I am going to say Jupiter going direct. I think that that is such a lift of an energy that is such an exciting energy. It is energy ultimately that is going to be inviting us to move forward towards a more optimistic vision, to take a chance to believe in ourselves and to know that we can with our own effort, improve our circumstances and our own belief as well. Remember, optimism is about belief. It is believing that things can go incredibly well, and they certainly can. I don't wanna imply that they can't, of course they can. When we have faith in ourselves and when it is that we take action in support of our faith, well, great things become possible. And that is what Jupiter in Sagittarius moving forward is part of uh, embedding the blessing in us now. At the same time, though, we can also tap into the blessing of Uranus going retrograde, inviting us to be honest with ourselves and to not limit our vision and to understand sometimes the universe has a much higher vision for ourselves than anything we could imagine for ourselves. Sometimes the most optimistic, highest, most lofty vision that you have for what's possible for you is actually very limiting from the wise and loving perspective of the universe. You may not be able to see that in the moment when you're very fixated on what it is that you're hoping for or yearning for or going for or wanting, we can't always appreciate the higher wisdom playing out that actually wants us to align with something even bigger than we can imagine for ourselves. Now that bigger may not come with, you know, huge crowds and massive accolades. Those ultimately are superficial expressions. What matters is living our truth, aligning with a path that allows us to feel at peace with ourselves. And these two big planets changing directions in their own right is going to remind us that there is nothing as empowering as being unapologetically ourselves and having faith in that honest vision for ourselves and our future. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded, exclusive video scopes each and every week unlimited access to special horoscopes. Uh, they get a dedicated Facebook group. They get a monthly hangout with a new moon uh, meet and greet and a new moon meditation as well. We've been having a lot of fun at, at that. And also early access, 24 to 48 hours, early access to the monthly horoscopes as well. And so much more, all of this in the superstar space at NadiaShaw.com. I look forward to meeting you there. I am so excited to announce a couple of new things. One is the next session of Synchronicity University. The autumn session is right around the corner. And before, I know how much so many of you loved being able to choose your own tuition rate. And so I'm offering that again. If you sign up in the month of August, you will get to choose your own tuition rate as low as $5 per class. That's low. That's unheard of. But here we are. And I'm really, really glad that I'm able to offer this um, and able to make astrology classes accessible to more people. Uh, these classes were chosen by the last, the summer school session that just came to an end. I appreciate all of my summer school students. Thank you so much for being there, for being online with me, uh, for celebrating your lives, for learning astrology with me. It was truly so rewarding, so much fun. So I'm really grateful to be able to present this new series of classes to you. And so they will include Jupiter, in the astrology chart. So one whole class looking at Jupiter will be going through the signs and houses of Jupiter so you can understand Jupiter in the astrology chart. And then we're gonna have two classes leading up to Halloween on astrological magic. One is gonna be on planetary magic. The second uh, is going to be on understanding your own way of approaching astrological magic as based in your own astrology chart. 
And then we are going to have a class on Pluto through the signs and houses, understanding the Plutonian energy in your astrology chart and introduction to electional astrology, which is the astrology of best days, choosing the best date for a particular endeavor. So we will be looking at that as well. So really wonderful classes coming up. And again, if you sign up this month, you get to choose your own tuition rate. We've got about two weeks left in the month or so. Uh, and so yes, click on the link below, join me online, uh, and uh, we will have fun learning together, certainly. And I look forward to meeting you in class. Now, if you've been watching me for a while, you know this background, you know this is my parents' house, I'm home, I'm visiting, uh, and I miss Biggie, my dog, already, and that is why I'm wearing my Biggie shirt, so that I can feel close to my beautiful little guy. I'll, I'll try to put his picture up here. I'm a very, very proud dog mom. I love him so much. So that is my little Biggie Smalls. You can find him on Instagram, actually, my little Biggie Smalls. Um, but yeah, that explains the t-shirt. And that also brings me to the necklace. Here we are, the pendant rather. It is not the chain, it is only the pendant. It is designed by me, 925 sterling silver, 10 karat gold plate. Uh, I have a few of these left. They are gonna be on sale only for two weeks while I'm here in Canada, only for two weeks. And so if it is that you would like one of these pendants, uh, and again, there are just a few left, but if you'd like one, uh, have a look at the description below, click on the link and you can enjoy. If you are a superstar, please make sure to use the links in the newsletter um, for the superstar discounts that I like to give. But of course, regardless, superstar or not, you are near and dear to my heart. And if you would like a heart of the universe is wise and loving near to your heart or on your altar uh, or somewhere to remind you of this sacred truth that I believe that I am in the world to affirm. Well, then you can learn more about the pendant at the links below and get one of your own. Live events coming up very, very soon. I'm super excited about live events. So what do we have going on? We have got, uh, NCGR conference in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm really looking forward to being back in Baltimore. We are gonna have so much fun. It's gonna be just such a delight to be in Baltimore. I'm just coming in and out for a couple of days um, and I am looking forward to speaking and I will be among truly world-class astrologers, part of a huge conference. We are gonna enjoy ourselves together. So I look forward to meeting you there. If you're anywhere in the Baltimore area, please do come out. I would love to meet you. And I will be part of a cruise event taking place in January, 2020 under the light, under the exact conjunction of Saturn and Pluto. We are going to have love, joy, hope, and transformation, a truly important voyage, a journey uh, that I believe and I hope will be a transformative experience for all participants involved. I am one of a few different astrologers there, truly notable astrologers who are part of this, and we are part of creating and experiencing a spiritual experience together. So yes, I'll be leading some sessions, but I will also be a participant. I will be there with you. I'll be experiencing this with you. Um, and I truly believe that those who are feeling karmically aligned to be part of this experience will find themselves there. And thank you. I think that's it for now. I appreciate you guys so very much. Um, and I'm truly very grateful for you. Thank you so much for continuing to be a part of my spiritual journey, for seeing me as some part of your spiritual journey as well. Uh, as I said, the classes, thank you so much to my students of summer school. It was a rewarding experience for me to not only uh, facilitate learning, but also to learn from you as well. And I am really looking forward and very excited to do it again for the autumn session 2019 of Synchronicity University. Uh, thank you, thank you for watching. It'll be a great week, enjoy.